Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to be talking today about splinters. Now, splinters are an essential tool. Um, let's first of all define what a splinter is. It's another word for it is a fragment. And the way that we'll understand it best is that it's a singleton or a void. So you know that many times you've picked up your cards and you have got a singleton in your hand, but you don't always have a chance to show it. And these days it's common if you're the defending side to lead a singleton. In fact, some experts say, if you don't lead your singleton, you don't have one. So, and I've made little jokes about that in the past, but in any case, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let me just pull up the um, save deals on this topic. It'll just take me a moment. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that if you have a question, please write it on the um, Zoom chat line and Paul will be the question master and will pass the questions on to me um, and so that I can answer them in a timely fashion. Okay. <coughs> so my guess is that with all of these hands today, it's going to be primarily north-south doing the bidding and east-west are going to pass. Um, I do this because I like to show you how a hand can change um, in a very minor way, and yet the bidding might change significantly. So Marissa is the dealer and is going to open the bidding. Okay. Okay, so let's look at this hand. Um, I'm going to open up all the cards so everybody can see everything, including the people at the table. Otherwise, it's no fun for them. So um, Jake has got two, six, eight, 11 high card points and a singleton. So look at the bid that he's made, three spades. But his hand is worth more than 11 points here because of this little singleton diamond. How many points should we give ourselves for, for that singleton when we have a fit with our partner? We two. can give ourselves at least two extra points. So that would mean that he has an evaluated opening hand. If his partner hadn't bid, he would have 11 points. But once his partner opens one spade, and he, we know that we've got a wonderful nine card fit, Jake knows that there's a game. By bidding three spades, his partner might pass. So let's tell her what we have and what's significant about his hand. Number one, he has four trumps. Number two, he's got a singleton or a splinter. Now, the criteria for showing that splinter are that we have enough points to go to game and that we guarantee four trumps. These are the essentials, four trumps and enough to go to game. And Jake can jump all the way up to four diamonds. So please bid four diamonds, Jake. Okay. Now, this is such a strange bid. Let's talk about it. How can partner know that this shows shortness? Well, let's see what happens if Jake bid two diamonds. Would that be forcing? No. Oh. One spade, two diamonds by Jake. That would say, partner, I've got at least four diamonds and there's a game here somewhere. That would be a two over one. <clears throat> saying that we're going to game, I've got 13 points. Um, jumping, this double jump, if two diamonds would be forcing, Jumping in diamonds shows shortness. So here, this double jump going all the way up to the four levels says, partner, game is guaranteed. I have four spades and enough to get to game. Notice that I did not bid Jacoby two no trump. So I don't have 13 points, most probably, but I do have a singleton or void in diamonds. So any questions on what I've said so far? I'll ask the, offer the table first. 
any questions from the table? No. Okay, good. Um, any questions from those who are kibitzing? Um, write your questions on the chat line and Paul will field them and make certain that I see them. Okay. Um, so let's continue. Good. Now let's look at Marissa's hand. Marissa's got a very nice hand. How many losers does she have? One spade, two hearts is three, no clubs, and three diamonds. That's a six loser hand. So it's a good hand to start with. But now her partner has just said that two of her losers are going away. He's only got one. Um, so Marissa is very excited. She can smell a slam on these cards because instead of having three diamond losers or maybe even four in reality, she knows that she only has one because if they lead diamonds, they can win the ace and any subsequent diamond tricks can be trumped in the dummy. So Marissa is going to ask, she's going to bid four no trump. How many key cards do you, do you have any key cards? And Jake has how many? Just one, the ace of hearts is a key card. So he will show his one key card. How do we do that? Playing 1430, we bid five clubs, one or four. Uh, Marissa has three herself, so she knows that it's only uh, one. <clears throat> now we have four out of the five key cards. The ace and king of trump and the ace of clubs is three. And he cannot have the ace of diamonds because we never splinter with a singleton ace. So he must have the ace of hearts. We don't actually care about the ace of diamonds. So nevertheless, Marissa is careful and she wants to know if he has the queen of spades. So partner, do you have the queen of spades? How will he answer? Very good, Marissa bids the cheapest suit. Do you have the queen of spades? And um, Jake does have it. Not only does he have the queen of spades, he has the king of clubs as well. So we're going to undo that please, Jake. And he's going to bid six clubs. Now we've gone past five spades, so we are committed to slam. So why is he bidding six clubs? Just in case Marissa wants to know, he has the king of clubs. So now she's very happy. We've got all the top spades. Her eight of hearts will go on the ace and her jack of hearts can go on the king of clubs. And she's only going to lose one diamond as long as she can trump something. It should be fine. So she's very happy to bid six spades. So this is a slam that we might not have thought about. It's the, the big thing is all the, mm -hmm. the fact that there's only one diamond loser on the hand. So this deal illustrates the importance of learning how to uh, understand what a splinter is and how to show it and when to show it what it guarantees. Always, if you're going to make a splinter jump, you always have to have four trumps because the opponents are going to attack that suit with, with glee and relish. And so you need lots of trumps to be able to keep trumping them and yet still retain trump control. Um, I, mean, I can see this a question from Michelle saying, must you have four spades? 100% a splinter bid guarantees four of your partner's trumps. And yes, the bid is alertable. What should you say when uh, four diamonds, um, if, if we're playing face to face, Marissa would say shortness. And playing BBO, Jake would type in shortness, S or V, however he wants to do it. So it's better to say shortness because people should understand that that means one or zero. A two card suit is not shortness. Excuse okay. me, we have some more questions? Yes, go ahead. Okay, from Jens, is it always the four level? 
Um, tomorrow we'll talk about mini splinters and they are not at the four level. But we're just talking about four level splinters today. And from Maris, she wants to know, what if you only had three spades? You cannot make a splinter bid. You have to find another way to show your hand. Okay. And Ted is asking, would a bid of three diamonds, what would a bid of three diamonds in the South mean? Come back tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> And from Nancy, what is minimum points for a responder with four Trump? To, in order to splinter, you have to have basically 11 points because you need to have an evaluated opening hand. So you might be able to do it with 10, depending on what the rest of your cards are and what losers you have. Let's count the losers in Jake's hand. He has two spades and one heart is three and two clubs is five and a singleton diamond is six losers <clears throat> using modern losing trick count. And so he knows that his partner who opened the bidding probably has seven. In fact, I think we counted that she had one, two, three, four, five, six losers. So this is a case where six losers and six losers, 12 losers, suggested a slam and in fact a slam was bid and made. So a losing trick count is not very popular in America, but I love it. And um, I learned it, I learned it from um, uh, bridge teachers in England and I loved it. Um, I had friends who learned it and started playing it in this country up in New Jersey and I love what they did. They started winning almost every event because they bid games or slams that nobody else in the room even thought about. And that's what happens on a hand like this. A last question, I believe. Yes. From Michelle. How do we know that the five diamonds is an ask for the queen of Trump? Well, this is all part of an agreement that you have with your partner. If you play key card, Number one, you have to agree which version you're playing. Are you playing um, regular Blackwood or 1430 or 3014? So that's a given. And then you have to agree if you're playing the Queen Ask. And I covered this a couple of weeks back and we did talk about the Queen Ask and it's very useful as in this instance. We don't really want to be in six when we know that we've got a, a short trick to lose and, uh, and we're missing the queen of Trump. So it's on a finesse and bidding a slam when you know it's on a finesse is, is not, um, it, it's a gambling choice and I do not recommend it. Another question has come in. Yes. Does saying six clubs also say you have the queen. Yes. If I did not have the queen, I'm obligated to bid five spades. If I had the queen, but no kings, no outside kings, I would bid six spades. So after five diamonds, my choices are five spades, six of a different suit, or six spades. Three choices. And each choice has a meaning. Okay, well, let's move on to the next deal. So it looks like Marissa's hand has not changed one iota. And we're looking at all the hands. That's okay. Okay. Now this time, Jake has the single, singleton diamond, but it's the ace. So for those who were listening carefully last time, um, and for those who couldn't take it all in and one say so, I'm going to remind you that we never splinter with a singleton ace. So Jake's hand is two, six, eight, 11, 15. This time he's good enough to bid two no Trump, Jacoby two no Trump. 
So let's bid Jacoby to no Trump. Thank you. And now we'll come back to Marissa. Now, Marissa's first obligation is to show a second five card suit if she has a good one, but she doesn't. Her second obligation is to show a singleton, but not the singleton ace of clubs. Her next obligation is to show extras if she has it. And she does because she's got 16 points. She can now bid three spades. And that will say, um, I've, got, I've got at least 16 points, partner. So that makes Jake excited. He's got 15 himself. He's got four trumps. They've got a wonderful fit. He's got control of hearts and diamonds. So he's going to show his diamond control. No, ask for an undo, please. We're going to go slow. Okay. Um, if partner can't show the ace of clubs or, or show the ace of hearts um, or, or show any controls, we could be in trouble. So showing the ace of diamonds makes Marissa feel very comfortable. Now we have control of diamonds. She's got control of clubs. Um, she's got, if they lead hearts, she's winning the first or the second heart trick. And her partner's got a, a full opening hand. So we're, we're really close. So now she's going to bid for, spade, uh, for no trump. Uh, excuse me, Rosemary, what's the definition of control? Must it be an ace? Of well, some people play first round control. If we play second, first or second round control, um, we could do different things. But a lot of people who attend these sessions find it a little bit confusing. So I decided that we will only show first round control on this deal. Okay. So in, in fact, when, once, uh, once Jake bid to no Trump, this should always suggest mm -hmm that you've got a good hand um, with, with controls in your hand so that if things go well, we might very well have a slam. Okay. So Marissa has chosen to bid for no trump and Jake's answer is five spades, quite different from last time. What does this show? Two, two aces or the king of trump but I have the queen, two controls plus the queen. Now, when I talk about controls here, I, I should really say key cards, so it's not confusing. Two key cards plus the queen of trump. Now, Marissa has got three key cards, the ace and king of trump and the ace of clubs, so that's all she needs to know. Notice that she doesn't have to ask about the queen this time, because Jake has already shown it. So we're, we're home and hosed. Okay. Any questions on this one? Um, what needs to be alerted here? Um, to no Trump must be alerted because that's a secret agreement playing Jacoby to no Trump. Um, three spades is normal. Four diamonds, this is a, a qubit, a control qubit, showing control of the diamond suit. If they lead a diamond, my hand is winning the trick. Four no trump, asking. Five spades, two plus the queen. Six spades, placing the contract. Now, um, East is on lead. So once the auction is over, before East can lead, the declaring side must explain what their bids mean. So we should say four diamonds control of first or first round control of diamonds, uh, of, of however you play it, first or first or second. And um, four no Trump was asking five spades is two plus the queen. You're under the new alert system, you are required to specifically state the meaning of these control bids before. East leads. Now, I have found that in um, when I go to tournaments and I'm playing in flight A 
um, people are very good about alerting their bids. They're serious tournament players. I noticed that at our club, um, it wasn't so bad when we were playing face to face. There's one or two people who are not on the ball when it comes to alerting. And they're elderly and we have to forgive them. But on BBO, um, I, I am very irritated when advanced players fail to alert their bids and give inadequate explanations. And I'm even more irritated when I tell them what my bid is. In not the, I tell them the meaning of the bid and they ask for further explanations. So yesterday I bid one no Trump and I said 12 to 14. And they said, please explain your bid. <laughs> to say go back to bridge school 12 to 14 what <laughs> <laughs> 12, i had 12 to 14 cards call the director <laughs> i have 12 to 14 cats in my house oh <laughs> you can tell them to take off their shoes and start counting their toes too right okay, okay so i can see a question here um yes. a, a few words about opening needs in this situation now Poor Vicky and Leslie are having to sit absolutely silent and pass while North and South have all the fun with these cards today. But they should be listening and paying attention. And so that that will help them make the lead. Now let's look at Leslie's hand. She's on lead. What have they shown her? Number one, we know that Jake has, has the ace of diamonds or, um, or he's void. Leading a diamond here is futile when you cannot see what he has. So let's look at the other suits. Um, no, nobody has bid anything except we know that they have at least four key cards because they bid six. They may even have five. So uh, we absolutely have to protect the, our queen of clubs. Quite often, it's a good idea to give them what they're known to have and lead a trump. Um, they've got, we know for a fact that they have nine trumps. So you have two babies and they're bidding six. Are they bidding six on a finesse? I very much doubt that your partner has a, a finessable card and will be very upset with you. It's possible. Um, leading a heart is probably going to help the declarer more than it's going to help your side. So I would make a very passive lead avoid clubs and diamonds and lead a spade. Mm. The doubleton spade, I would lead the eight. Uh, by the way, it may be fashionable to lead the five from this holding. Um, I might if I had an honor um, because I don't want to end up with two honors on the same trick. Uh, and I'll tell you a little story, a very fine player named Dan Morse. Um, I met him on a bridge cruise. And I soon discovered that he was an expert, um, a grand life master, a former president of the ACBL, all sorts of goodies. And I said to him before he left the ship, well, Dan, I'm probably going to write a story one day about meeting you. Is there a hand that you would like, that you remember that you'd like to share with me? He said, yes, it happened in 1916. Now this cruise was in 2011, so. <laughs> His hand was memorable to him. He said he was a very cocky young man and the opponents got to seven diamonds and he had the king and one. So he decided to lead a low diamond and fool the declarer. And so that's what he did. And um, they played the jack from the dummy. His partner played a diamond and the jack held the trick and the declarer laid down her ace dropping his king and his partner's queen, whereupon the declarer jumped up in the middle of the silent room with, you know, 5,000 people in, said, I made it. <laughs> Would have been impossible for her to make it if his partner had played the queen as she should have, but she was asleep. <laughs> so there you are. That's my horror story of leading low from a doubleton. We have a number of questions. Would you like to take them? Yes, thank you. 
Okay, uh, a number of people, Anita wants to know, why not go to seven spades? And Tom is asking also, couldn't this be a grand slam? We don't have the skills at this point to easily bid seven. You have to be able to count all 14 tricks. I mean, I'm sorry, not 14 tricks. You have to be able to count 13 tricks. And at the very least, you need to know that you have the ace and king of all four suits. So on this auction, that was not easy to do with the skills that we have. Next question from Judy. Three spades shown here versus an answer of three no trump for 15 to 17 points in response to two no trump. Please explain. Um, I'm not familiar with bidding three no trump over two no trump to show that. Um, I'm, I teach and I play that three spades here shows at least 16 points. I think three no trump is meant to show ace, king, queen, fifth of your trump suit. So that your partner knows that we're not missing any of the uh, top three honors. I'll state this question, but I'm not sure uh, of the question. Judy Burstein, what if you already alerted as the bidding went on? Well, Q bids are not alertable. The four diamond bid is not alertable at the time. And um, five spades is not alertable at the time. These, these bids must be explained after the auction is over, not during the auction. Two no trump is, is alerted at the time for the benefit of the opponents. Um, alert, uh, uh, identifying what four diamonds me means. Um, on BBO, it wouldn't matter so much, but at the table, if, if North were to an announce that four diamonds was a control bid, that's giving her partner unauthorized information of how she interprets his bid. Now, very often people make mistakes in interpreting their partner's bid because they didn't get any sleep the, the previous night or they forgot that they discussed this nine months ago. And so they very often make mistakes during the course of the auction. And they only find out when the explanations are given at the end. And then they realize that they've really screwed it up. Rosemary, can I ask a question further that? Of course. What I meant was you said the new rules are you have to uh, announce alertable bids before the play begins. But if you already alerted stop, to stop, no stop, Trump stop, when stop, you bid it. Stop, stop, you, stop. Okay. Stop. Who am I talking with? Judy Bernstein. I thought so. Okay. No. Um, the only... If you play something that is off the wall, and you know if you play something that's off the wall, that's very rare, you must pre-alert that. And the one example they gave was for people who play precision. So, so people might sit down at your table and say precision one club openers before they even pick up their cards. That's a, called a pre-alert. Um, that's the only example that they gave in these changes that would affect any of us. Okay. Okay. A Thank short you. Club, a short club is not a pre-alert. You just have to announce it at the time you bid it. Could be two. Uh, something like Jacoby must be announced, alerted at the time. A qubit is never alertable. It now has to be, excuse me, explained when the auction is over. Um, once a four no Trump auction is initiated, the responses are not normally alerted or explained during the auction because it gives information to both members of the, the bidding pair. So, but it, it now is a requirement that this is explained before the opening leader decides what card to lead. Okay. Two more questions. Yes. Uh, T. Kennedy wants to know, does this hand make it? Uh, I believe so. Um, you have some work to do because you've got, um, you may have two pitches for the diamonds. So one diamond will go on the ace, two, two diamonds, one diamond will go on the king of clubs, another diamond will go on the uh, 13th heart, 
And so you need to be able to rough at least one diamond in the dummy. Now you may take a safety play and cash two top spades. And before, before roughing diamonds, you might decide to rough a diamond early. It's very unlikely that one person has seven or eight diamonds and never, never bid them. So probably you should cash the ace of diamonds, play a spade to the ace, um, rough a diamond. That's probably very safe. Then pull the next round of trumps, everything comes down. So now you play the ace of clubs, the king of hearts, the jack of hearts, a heart over to the board, um, cash the king of clubs, pitching another diamond, cash the six of hearts, pitching your other diamond and claim. So it will make seven trips, uh, make seven, uh, seven spades. But as I said earlier, it's not so easy to bid it on the auction that we had. We have two more questions, not pertaining to the lesson, but just in general. Would you like them now? Yes, please. Okay, from Maris. Uh, the new rule as to transfer, could you give an example? Um, yes. Nothing to do with what's on the table. One no trump by me, two diamonds by my partner. In the old days, I would say transfer. I now have to say hearts. She has hearts. And if on BBO, when you type in your, instead of typing in the word transfer, you type in the word hearts or five hearts because you're promising five hearts when you transfer. It's as simple as that. The word transfer has disappeared. The word hearts replaces it. Now, what happens if you have uh, one no trump, two spades? Well, if spades is a transfer to clubs, you say clubs. Instead of saying transfer or relay, you say clubs. And then your partner will correct? And then your partner will, will bid clubs. And then if you wanted diamonds, it's up to you. Then he will bid diamonds, yes. Okay, last question so far from Tom. What's the protocol for explaining the bidding at the end of the auction? He wants to know, do the ops ask or do you volunteer? You have to volunteer. You're required to volunteer the information. I want to go back to the previous question for one moment. Um, you said one no trump, two spades. If this is a pass or correct situation, I think that you should, you should explain this as clubs or diamonds. Can you say a minor? If you just say clubs, then, um, and then you bid diamonds, they may feel um, that they didn't get good enough explanation. So if, if you're playing the system, one no trump, two spades, three clubs, three diamonds as a way to get to three diamonds. I think that when you bid two spades, you should announce that as clubs or diamonds. Okay, did we run out of questions? <laughs> I would just say a minor. You could, you could say that as well, yes. One minor. Perfect. Perfect. Now it's the moment of truth for Marissa. So as always, does she have a fit with her partner's spades? Yes. Uh, how high should she go? Four, seven, and five is 12, and another five is uh, 17. And a singleton club makes her hand worth 19. So Marissa knows that there's enough for game in spades. So how can she show her hand? She could bid four spades, 
but that doesn't really describe her hand perfectly. So Marissa has come up with a magnificent bid. Jumping in clubs to the four level says exactly what she has. Partner, I have four of your trumps. I have shortness in clubs and I have enough to be in game opposite a six count. Now, a moment ago, I told you to think about how you recognize it as, as a splinter. Well, if Marissa bid um, one heart, one spade, two clubs, would two clubs be forcing? No. Would three clubs be forcing one, one heart, one spade, three clubs by Marissa? That would be a forcing bid. That would be a jump shift by opener to say, I've got 19 points with five hearts and at least three or four clubs and you're not allowed to pass. There's a game here somewhere. So in order to show her singleton, she must jump to the four level. And now we have the same criteria. She must guarantee four, trump, four card trump support and the four level suit must be a singleton. And she must have an evaluated um, game forcing hand. In this case, opposite six points. And she has all of that. Jake has nothing extra. He's got an eight count. His partner did not open two clubs. So she's probably maxed out at 19, 20 points. That gets us up to 28, a long way short of making a slam. Let's look at it another way. How many losers does he have? Three spade losers, one heart is four, one club is five, and three diamonds is eight losers. Well, his partner, hmm, in order to make a slam, we need to be able to take 12 tricks, four losers. If I've got eight losers, she needs four losers, no more than four losers, but she didn't open two clubs. So slam is unlikely. So Jake is very content to bid four spades and end the auction. Okay. But I have in fact four losers. One, two, three, four. You do have four losers, right? But Jake rates to have nine losers. Mm -hmm. When he bids one spade, nine of four is 13, that's not enough. Okay. But here's the bottom line. You can see when you look at the cards that in fact you are missing two aces. Yes. So um, we can get rid of the, uh, the extra diamond in the dummy on the long hearts. That's no problem, but, but we are missing two aces. So Jake's, Jake's position in my mind was perfectly correct just to say four spades. Okay. So the important thing about this hand is that the opener can self splinter in order to support partner. So one heart opening hand, one spade, at least four spades, at least six points. Four clubs, partner, a miracle. I have a, a huge hand, singleton club or void, four of your spades and enough to take you to game opposite a six count. And Jake bids four spades saying, thanks partner, wish me luck. I haven't got much. But in fact, he can make five, I believe. So um, how to alert four clubs. Four clubs, the, if you, when you self alert, you just say shortness. If you're playing face to face, Jake would have to say shortness. One, the word shortness describes it all. It's a singleton or void. Let's go on to the next hand. Um, I, I think you're much better off bidding two hearts. 
than doubling. You, you really want your partner to lead hearts if the opponents buy the auction. Um, sorry, I didn't get to it in time. Thank you. Okay. So, Rosemary, can you hear me? Yes. So, my question is, um, is the criteria that I have five of the major to bid the major as opposed to the double? I think it's because you, you want to make certain that part, if partner's on lead, that she leads a heart. Okay. It's a lovely heart suit. You don't want to end up in two diamonds because she's got jack fourth of diamonds. Okay. And three hearts. I hear you. So okay. this, this is pretty clear cut. Okay. Good hearts here, I think. Okay. Well, um, Jake has just shown a very weak hand. After there's interference, jumping to the three level says four spades and probably less than six points. So that's not a good description. Well, that says you've got five trumps and a singleton. So still not quite right. And, and usually less than 10 points. So another undo. So what, what's the interesting things about your hand? You've got five and seven, is, you've got 12 high card points. Your singleton heart makes your hand worthy to go to game. And it happens to be the opponent's suit even more so. So it would be great if normally we would just cubid three hearts to say I've got a limit raise or better. But in this instance, you can jump to four hearts. Now, four hearts is going to say two things. It's going to say, partner, I have a fit with your spades. Yeah. And I'm actually better than a limit raise. I, I could have just cubid. So why am I jumping? And, and, and when you bid three spades, I could bid four spades. Why did I jump to four hearts? Because I've got a singleton or void in the heart suit. Leslie might have good hearts, but I've got shortness and enough to take you to game. Now, what's Marissa going to do? Mm. I cannot give my, my singles on now. Well, you just got to, the question is, do you want to be in game or slam? Maybe slam, yeah. Well, you've only got 11 points. Yeah, but it, we have like all the space in the world. Um, and then he had a, she has a singleton heart, which is okay for my, for my hearts. And um, because I'm looking at the hand, <laughs> I can see he has the ace of clubs, which is the other thing that can help me. Um, but I don't know how to ask that. Oh, you just bid for no trump. Okay, fine. Let's just give it a try. If you think there might be a slam, you can bid for. Think it. Maybe, yes. Okay. So, how many key cards do you have? Mm. Okay. Perfect. Five hearts. Okay. He has two, and I have two. And so he must have the ace of clubs because he announced a singleton, I mean, a void or whatever in hearts. He must have the ace of, of clubs. Very so, good. So I think I can go. <laughs> okay, go. Go, thank you. Very well done. <laughs> wow, that was cool. Good job, Marissa. <laughs> Okay, so what, what is Leslie going to lead here? Do you want me to lead? I want you to, you're on lead. Why, why would you not lead the ace of hearts? Because he may have, I, I'm pretending that I'm looking, that I'm, I can't see the cards. <laughs> it, 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 this case is different from before, Leslie. On the other hand, you had the king. You didn't have the ace. Here you've got the ace and king. 
and he does not have a void because he would have shown the void um, when partner bid for no Trump. If that heart had actually been a void, he would have been able to show it. So you, you probably should cash your ace of hearts while the going's good before it goes away on something and at least get one trick. And now you've got the advantage of being able to look at the dummy and to decide what to do. You know, I have a question. If Since she bid the hearts, if if I'm on lead, this is Vicky, um, should I lead my queen or should I lead small to her? When you're leading, if you never supported her. Right. You have to show her um, length. So, so you would lead your lowest heart. Okay, thank you. Okay, that wouldn't promise the queen, but that's the card that you would lead. And then she'll know it's a singleton or at least three, if thank you lead low. So, so my next question, Rosemary, is this. Um, why would I not continue the hearts with the possibility that she's just gonna have to rough um, right off the bat in the dummy? For fear that we'll have the trip. Well, you could, but but I would try to set up a club trip for your side. If you knock out that ace, then you're guaranteed a club. Mm. On on the club, Vicky, I would prefer that you play the three. It's a minor thing, but when you play the three and next time you play it, you have the two. Um, I'm just mentioning this, no, no problem. Your partner will know that you, you liked clubs. You liked her club lead. Oh. I, you had a doubleton or, or you've, you've got something. Okay, the, the two is just says no interest, not, don't do this. Okay. okay. So now you're just going to pull your trump and go about your business, right? Yes. I need I need two trumps in, in dummy, but I can have them. To trump the hearts, I mean, but I I, I, I can do it. I need exactly. two, two trumps you now. Two hearts and you've got to trump three clubs. Yes, but so, I have a yes. lot from here, yeah. Yes. No problem, yeah. Okay. Okay, you want me to play it? Or? No, 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 no. Just, just claim the rest of the tricks. Okay. We can go on. No, I said just claim. Oh, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, very good. Okay. There are some questions, please. Go ahead, Paul. Thank you. Okay. I'm looking here. Um, how would South in the past hand show? A a void in hearts if she had one. Well, how many key cards did, did he have? Did he have two? Uh, I think he bid five hearts to show right. two without the queen. Yes. So um, the easiest way is just to bid six hearts. What, whatever your normal bid would have been to show the void, you just make that bid, but at the six level, as long as it's not higher than uh, your suit. So two, two without the queen would be five hearts. So six hearts says two, two, no queen, but I do have a void. Okay, and another question. Yes. From Michelle, did I understand that if I have a void, do you count that as a control? Uh, you show it the way that I just described. Okay. There are other ways to show it, but this I think is the easiest one. Um, the way I'm currently playing it, I have to look it up before every session um, to be to, to remind myself of what it is when I play with that particular partner. With everybody else, I, I just copy what I learned long ago, which is whatever your answer would be, make choose that suit that bid it at the sixth level to indicate that it was a void. But your partner should uh, should have an idea of where your void is. It should be a useful void, and uh, which means not a suit that partner had previously bid to show that he got that suit. Because if you've got a void, you can't take a finesse. 
to help him out. So it should be a useful void. Now on this hand, um, we'd already cubed four hearts to show shortness. So now it would be crystal clear to bid um, over four no trump to bid six hearts. And now partner will know for a fact that it's a heart void. Remember, I'm happy to answer all these questions, but they're very difficult to um, absorb the answers without seeing the cards on the table. So um, if you would like to see a hand with certain conditions, send me a note and we can always build them into a future lesson. Let's see what's happening on this deal. Vicky, it's your oh, moment to shine. Yeah. <clears throat> Perfect. Perfect. Wow. Very good. <clears throat> okay, so we're playing 1430. Um, that means that clubs are one or four, diamonds are zero or three. Vicky has to work out whether it's zero or three key cards. <laughs> well, here's, here's what you do. If you don't know whether it's zero or three. I just assume it's three because she, she wouldn't have bid the hearts if. She, she wouldn't had have had enough points to jump to the four level. Right. If she were missing three card, three key cards. Right. Okay, so six spades. Usually when you have nine trumps, um, usually you can handle the queen. So she didn't bother to ask about the queen. So Marissa, what are you going to lead? Mm. We didn't have a chance to say anything, and they have, um, well. Um, now, here's the situation. You know, you know for a fact that the opponents have eight trumps, and you have one, that's nine. So your partner could have as many as four spades. So mm -hmm. you certainly don't want to lead a spade here. Mm -hmm. Because okay. you, can't, you can't give them any information that's going to help them suss out where the missing spades are. So you cannot lead a spade. In fact, you should make it a point never to lead a singleton trump. Unless okay. the opponents, you know from the auction that they're going to be cross roughing. Okay. So we have to look at our other cards. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, some... Okay. So um, either clubs or diamonds. I mean, okay, okay. A club. So let's look at the cards. Um, any spade losers? Yes, we're missing the queen. And if they come down doubleton, which is the way that you would play this, um, you'll be okay. Hearts? Well, there's only one in the dummy, so the, the king will be good. You've got these, the 10 and the seven to get rid of. Well, we have to either rough them in the dummy or look for a way to get rid of them in the dummy. Let's look at clubs and diamonds. No losers in clubs and no losers in diamonds. And in fact, once you've pulled Trump, plenty of length in these two suits 
to throw mm -hmm. your extra heart. Mm -hmm. So no problem. The, your main, main goal on this hand is to win the ace of clubs and pull trump. The ace of clubs, ace of spades, king of spades, getting the bad news. And usually the rule is that when there's one card higher than yours, one trump higher than yours outstanding, we don't pull it unless they could stop our fun. So you would just go about um, playing on clubs, playing on diamonds and throwing away your hearts and they can rough in whenever they want. Won't be until the very end, they have to follow. So you're going to certainly make six spades. The only trick you'll lose is the queen of spades. This should be the last hand. Oh my gosh, that went fast. Oh. Okay, thanks for the heads up, Paul. Oops. Mm. Oh, okay. No, mm, can, I, can I go three spades or that, that wouldn't mean anything? Well, three spades does have a meaning. In mm. fact, it confirms the heart fit. It doesn't say shortness. It confirms the heart fit and says slam is a possibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is an alert. Three spades is alert. Forcing confirms a heart fit. Well, if she's confirming a heart fit, why would you deny her? Three, three spades says that um, she has a fit with your hearts and a very good hand. She didn't just bid four hearts. So you must now start cue bidding. On the way to four hearts, you're going to be a good cooperative partner and show any side suit ace. And your cheapest one is clubs. So four clubs. Aha, so she's got the ace of diamonds. And now you're going to bid four hearts. Now, Marissa knows, no, she doesn't know anything. <laughs> I mean, she knows, she doesn't know whether you've got the ace of spades or not, but she can ask how many key cards you have in hearts. So five spades, two plus the queen, that means we are committed to six hearts. But from Jake's point of view, he's the declarer. If they lead a spade, um, if partner doesn't have the ace of spades, you'll win the second trick. We've got the ace king of diamonds, the ace of clubs, and um, she's got, we've got nine hearts. This looks like a very good proposition to be in six hearts. So what would Vicky lead? That is not the lead. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You have to say to yourself, who, um, who, who's likely to have the king of spades? South. Yeah. So you cannot lead spades. 
but you have a perfect lead in your hand and that's it. Leading the sequence is always a winner because even if they've got the ace and king, your 10 will set up for a trick. Of course, they might have run out of diamonds by then, but it's much better than playing the ace of spades. Aces are meant to capture kings. Nobody has shown shortness in space. You have to be patient and wait for that. So we're going to make it. Well, let's look at each suit in turn. No heart losers, only one spade loser. Now the queen of diamonds, hmm. well, you're gonna win it in your hand and they probably got the queen 10. But that's not good news. You're gonna lose a diamond for sure, unless you can pull Trump and pitch it on the queen of clubs. So ace of clubs, seven of clubs to the king, and then the queen is good, and you'll be able to pitch that little diamond. But you're gonna to have to win this trick and then pull trumps. And remember, you've got all these spades to get rid of. You'll give up a spade. If the ace is on your right, not so bad. You better hope that the hearts come down in, in uh, doubleton. And of course they do. So this hand makes six hearts very nicely bid. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming today. Quite a turnout. And um, excuse me, do you have a second for a couple of last questions? 